Uh, I suppose the interesting thing about this uh, dispute is that both of these groups are part of the same project. So it's two teams that have been working together for quite a long time. Australia has reached out um, a long time ago and um, uh, had maritime archaeologists to travel over there and to support them in their um, archaeological work. So the dispute really seems to be about the level of certainty of identification. Uh, they haven't released the full technical report of the recent archaeological work, so it's quite hard for us to say definitively um, whether, you know, to make our own judgment calls on this. What we really have is just a press release and a critique of that press release that was uh, released by the American team. Uh, and, yeah. It, so it is an interesting point, though, if they're working together as a team, why did the Australian Maritime Museum jump the gun in this way, do you think? Uh, well, it's to do, I think, uh, and again, this is partly speculative, but it's, it's really to do with the level of certainty. So if you're working from the same evidence base, uh, it's, it's, you know, if you're 95% certain of the identification of a wreck, are you willing to make an announcement that you think you found it and that this is, is fairly definitive and maybe as far as we can take it? Or do you want to hold on and wait for that last bit of proof? I mean, how far can you take it? This wreck has been under investigation for a very long time without um, that piece of evidence. And some people believe we'll never get that from the remains that are there. They're very partial. Uh, I think it's estimated that only 15% of the wreck survives. All right, well, let's take, uh, take us through what you know about how you go trying to verify a shipwreck. What is the, the process that gets you to that 95% belief? Yeah, so in, in that respect, uh, in, in terms of the methods of investigation, what's happening with this shipwreck is very typical. Uh, and we follow a very similar process for most of the uh, kind of early modern period shipwrecks, the age of sail shipwrecks that we work on. Um, they've started with uh, historical records that uh, trace the path of this ship through many owners. It was renamed at one point and it passed through um, lots of different services after its use uh, in the exploration. Uh, and so there was a record of it being deposited in a certain location. Uh, and then the uh, quest was on really to investigate the shipwrecks in that area and see if any of them match the details we know about uh, this ship. So there was a, a lot of historical research and then that was followed up by all the other methods of um, survey, uh, archeological survey. In the past, it was very much about tape measures and swimming around and taking measurements. Uh, but more recently, we've been able to tap into new technologies. This is part of my own research is to focus on methods that give us a uh, digital survey. And they sit alongside the traditional methods and really give us very high resolution uh, scans that allow us to make digital reconstructions and accurate measurements. And they can really tie in the building traditions that we have in historical records with physical remains on the seabed. Shipwrecks on the seabed, they tend to be very partially preserved. So you may only have the keel, some of the frames, but really the lowest part of the ship, anything that hasn't been buried in mud is likely to be eaten away by marine organisms. And that's what you see with Endeavour, if it is Endeavour. Yes, indeed. And so if, if there's only 15% of this vessel left, is that enough, do you think, to sort of take those historical checks and say, yes, on the balance of probabilities, this is Endeavour? Well, clearly, um, that's the feeling here in Australia. And um, the correlation between the historical records, between the timber, um, framing, you know, spacing between the frames, uh, the overall dimensions, some of the um, way that the keel was put together, they match very closely the records that we have for um, Endeavour. Endeavour was built as a collier ship. It wasn't built as a, a grand design for exploring the world. It was a very everyday ship that was very sturdily built. It was designed to haul coal. It had a flat bottom, which is very useful for uh, traveling into unknown areas where you don't know what the depth is going to be. Uh, and so this ship that uh, they've been focused on recently, it does represent a big leap in our knowledge in, in the probability. 
uh, of whether this is or is not that ship. Uh, and so it really looks like much more convincing. The, I mean, the interesting thing is this headline has reappeared in the media multiple times over the last, uh, certainly over the last decade and probably even going further back ever since they traced it to this area. Uh, but this latest announcement, I think, is the most convincing. But obviously, the team in America felt that uh, it's still not quite at that threshold. And for professionals like me, it's impossible to really speculate on that until they release the detail. Mm. So unfortunately, the, the announcement has come without the detail and the timing is a little bit um, confusing from that point of view. Yeah, and it's interesting because the Australian Maritime Museum came back again after their American colleagues pushed back and said, no, they are, they are really standing firm behind their findings. So it may just be that in the coming weeks and months there is consensus among them all that this is the best chance we ever have of identifying Endeavour. Yeah, and indeed, uh, as far as I know, there's been really a massive amount of work over the years put in by uh, Australian maritime archaeologists to further this investigation. And, uh, you know, I, I suppose they have, uh, you know, the, the dispute between them seems to be uh, very unfortunate in that regard. But if they have indeed found the remains of Endeavour, I think that will be very significant for Australia. It's, it's a somewhat contested legacy, uh, what this ship means. It means different things to different people. But as an object, it holds a lot of significance in itself. I mean, we, 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 uh, the design of it, as I say, is a very everyday sort of ship. Mm. Uh, and it's not fascinating in terms of the way it was built. But the events that it was um, involved Connected in are with. hugely significant. Yeah. yeah. And what's your for, bet? For Do you not just Australia. Yes, no, for the world, of course, because, as you say, it's such a contested vessel in so many ways. And what's your gut feeling? I feel I feel rather optimistic. I mean, um, I really would like to read the report. Yeah. Uh, and I hope that it gets released soon. But um, perhaps they feel like they need to do further investigations. I don't know. We'll wait and see. Great to chat. Thanks so much, John. Thank you very much.